Hello everyone, this is Ali Moin Afshari and in this video I want to talk about some of the experiences that we have had with teaching advanced traders and witnessing trader development in our Systems Academy 2 program. I'm going to show you what our philosophy is in Systems Academy. That's my personal trading philosophy, which focuses on safety and long-term longevity of a trading program. And then also share with you some of the experiences that we have had with all kinds of traders with different backgrounds and how they develop into professional traders. So let's get started. The very first thing to understand is the difference between fully discretionary trading compared to systematic trading. The models here represent both approaches. The discretionary trading model is based on guidelines. Guidelines are high-level, open-ended rules that really are not specific very much and they're not objective at all. But guidelines are good because they allow the trader to be extremely flexible. Guidelines are the lens through which the trader looks at a chart. The information on the chart represents data that could be correlated with one of those guidelines. For example, there's a guideline that says, if a breakout gets follow through, there is a high probability of continuation. Now it's not specific. It's not saying what size of a breakout, what kind of follow through. So there are a lot of information that are missing from this guideline. Therefore, the trader has to bring in his experience to further tune this guideline with respect to the chart in front of him, the bars that he's looking at right now, to generate an instantaneous trading rule that applies to that moment in time on that chart, that specific moment. And that trading rule allows the trader to take that trade, but it does not apply to future trades. So it's good for one second in the market. If the position gets filled, that's fine. You have a position. But if the market does something or the chart changes, the same rule does not apply five minutes later. Now, if you compare that with the systematic trading model, you will see that there are major differences. In the systematic trading model, market data is fed into system rules. So system rules are at a lower layer or level compared to where market data or the chart is. If those rules match something on the chart, there is a potential signal, but that signal needs to get filtered now. So every signal that's generated has to also pass through a certain number of filters before the signal could be validated. Once the signal is valid, then the system can take a trade. That usually results in order in the market for a new position. So as you see, a system is bound to be less flexible compared to a trader that operates based on guidelines. Now, if this is the case, why would anyone want to trade based on systems? Because after all, discretionary trading is more flexible, you can synchronize with the market much better, and you're bound to make more money. Now, all of those things are correct. The issue is really the trader's experience. To build that experience, people usually need a very long period of time, and time is not really the success factor here. Deliberate practice and staying focused on the task is, and those two things are actually hard things to accomplish by a lot of people. They need accountability, they need to be disciplined to finish something, and then that discipline has to carry over to execution of this style of trading too, which is another very difficult thing to do. Systems take care of a lot of those issues because all of those issues are fixed before the trading starts. All the research, all the system development is done outside of the market hours. And when it's time to trade, then things are really clear and the trader knows exactly what to do. That's a lot easier than to look at the chart and think in real time to generate those instantaneous rules. And that is usually a shortcut to success if you think of success as consistent profitability. This slide shows my philosophy for trading. It's focused on safety first, while we are maintaining safety, meeting our end of year goals as well. Now to do this, I design systems and the system is made up of two different components. Basically, every system has two smaller systems inside it. The first part is a signal generator, and that signal generator is responsible for processing the market data and coming up with different edges or signals that the trader is interested to take. The second system is a risk management system that controls the risk exposure of the entire system. So the idea is that if this complex machine, made up of two smaller machines, 
operates on my capital and takes a portion of it and invests it in the market, over many, many cycles, the result is going to be the capital coming back to the account plus something more, and that something more is the profits. Now to do this, the Systems Academy 2 philosophy, which is something we teach, is to first develop a robust trading system. And by robust, we mean systems that do not break as markets evolve. They are not underlying specific. Like for example, they are not designed to trade crude oil only. They can trade crude oil. They can trade stocks. They can trade indices, all of them. So they are not specific to one market and they are not specific to a certain time frame. Basically, the system doesn't care what kind of chart you're feeding data from it to it. As long as the data is there, the system is agnostic to time frame, underlying, what market, what kind of volatility environment we are in. Those are characteristics of robust systems. Now by system, I'm particularly referring to the first system, which is the signal generator in that more complex model. The second part is to reduce probability of risk of ruin. Risk of ruin or ruin is the value that you place on your account. Like for example, you would say, if I hit a drawdown of 15%, I see that as a ruin. And this number is very different for everyone. For example, a fund manager usually has a risk of ruin of about 15% or a ruin level of or drawdown level of 15%. Because if you talk to them, they will say that if I have a 15% drawdown, then my clients are going to fire me. The number is very personal. It can be something else for you. You might have a lower number or a higher number, but whatever it is, it is determined by the trader. You have to define it yourself. The third topic here is meeting your end of year targets. Those are usually financial goals. Like for example, I want to double my account every year, or I want to have at least 40% return on investment in my trading account at the end of the year. Whatever it is, that is also determined by you. Now the goal here is to design this system in such a way that it operates under most market conditions with a very low probability of actually seeing that ruin. Now to do that, we need a signal generator that's high quality, which means it provides trades that are mostly winners and there is um, there's a high level of reliability with the signal generator. This makes designing the risk management layer a lot easier. What we do is that we push the probability of seeing that ruin far out. Here's the bell-shaped curve that's used in statistics for probability determination. The further out you go to the right and left sides of this graph, probabilities drop. But what we do is we design the risk manager in such a way that the probability of seeing that ruin in your trading drops to something that's near zero. When we are talking about probability, the numbers are never 100% and never zero because those are certainties, but we can get very close to zero for all practical purposes. Something like probability of seeing ruin goes down to one chance in 20 years of trading. Basically, you are never going to see it. Now, this will give us an envelope of performance for that system with a known maximum and minimum. And through risk management, we position it in such a way that our end of year targets falls somewhere within that envelope of performance. So that we know if we continue to trade in that manner, within the course of the year, somewhere close to the end of the year, we're going to be able to meet our financial targets with basically very, very low probability of experiencing ruin along the way. This is what I teach in Systems Academy 2 program, and that's what I do for my own trading, which is summarized as safety while meeting your end of year goals. Here is the program milestones for Systems Academy 2 program, and this is basically a model for success if you want to follow the systematic trading path. The reason I developed this was that when I was in my development stage and I was looking for something like this, I couldn't find anything even close. But I was hardworking and very curious, so I started reading everything that I could find and over time developed each stage slowly, one piece at a time, until I had a very good understanding of what's the correct model for success, which is the one I just talked about, safety while meeting your end of year goals. That one statement is broken into these 20 steps. And at each step along the way, we teach how to master that topic and how to think systematically about their trading 
Therefore, new ideas could be turned into test cases and test cases further developed into signal generators and signal generators tested and coupled with a good functioning financial strategy or risk management model so that the system becomes a high performance robust system capable of meeting the end of year goals. As you see, Systems Academy program has two tracks. This is basically what you have to do if you want to do it on your own. Track one is 100% theory and track two has still some theory in it, but most of the focus in track two is to develop a trading system. Now this system can be anything. It could be fully automated. It could be partially automated. It could be completely discretionary. Yes, for even discretionary trading, we can have systems. The key here is to be able to think systematically about the information in hand, which is market data, and be able to design strategies that are designed with that systematic approach in mind. So there is clarity in them. They're objective. And once it's triggered, once you have a signal, there is no doubt how to execute on that signal so that the side effects of trading, which are usually emotions or stress that comes up and prevents the trader from doing a good job, are kind of eliminated from the entire process. If you compare Systems Academy to most other courses, you will see stark differences in our approach. And this is the second reason I developed Systems Academy. Now, most courses, they are for beginners. And the idea is we're going to take you from a beginner state and teach you this approach or this methodology, and you're going to be able to become consistently profitable. Well, sure, that's great, but consistent profitability is not a characteristic of a beginner or intermediate trader. Consistent profitability is a characteristic of an expert trader. So in saying so, the beginner course is alluding to the fact that they're going to take you as a beginner and make you an expert or a professional trader. Although that's possible and some courses can do it, the issues are the courses are usually just online, so you have to study on your own. And that means the course usually has weak structure or no structure without major frameworks that are necessary for systematic approach to markets. There is usually no practice structure. There is no accountability. You don't have to report to anyone your progress and there's nobody to watch over you. So there is no supervision, which means as a student in these courses, you have to provide all of these things yourself. And that's quite a tall order because if people were good in providing these things for themselves, all that everybody needed to succeed was a library. You could go to a library and become a doctor, you could go to a library and become an engineer, but that's not how things work. Therefore, most of these courses have a high failure rate. People do not achieve consistent profitability. Now, my goal for Systems Academy initially was to provide all of these frameworks and accountability and structure that is necessary for people to become professionals or expert level traders. But in doing so, you need to start working with people who are serious. So how do you filter for serious traders? Well, I decided that we cannot work with beginners because beginners are also mixed up with a lot of dreamers, shortcut seekers, people who want to get rich quick and they see the markets in the light of those excitements and emotions rather than a career. So we filter for advanced or intermediate advanced traders, people who have passed the stage of the beginner and have shown some consistency in their studies. They have had some experiences trading, they have read a number of books, and they have shown the endurance to pass the beginner stage and are now at intermediate levels. So we take them and provide all of those things for them. We teach them to think systematically so they understand systems. And these systems are not just the trading systems that are used in trading. They are in every aspect of this career. Systems for staying organized, systems for business management, so there are a lot of different systems that you have to have to support your trading business that will allow the cash flow engine of the business, which is the trading system, to actually go online and generate profits. We also teach them how to do effective research for these systems, and we are expecting our students to show the rigor of finishing a longer course. Now, the course is long because we need time to do these things, and time is an important success factor. 
you need to have time to work under supervision. You need somebody to look over your shoulder and correct your direction when it is needed. So you cannot achieve this in a short program. The program has to be long. Now the end result, the goal that we are working towards is to have at least one system at the end of the program that is proven to generate consistent profitability. The trader can then move on to either use that system or now he has acquired the skills that are necessary to build other systems based on other ideas. Now, what we see, and this happens quite frequently, is that once our Systems Academy students graduate and they start trading their systems, after a while, usually a year or so, they call me and they say, hey, look, um, I see a lot more trades. So it looks like I don't need my old system anymore. What do you think I have to do? And that's usually the beginning of the expert level competency. That's when uh, the trader has graduated even from the systematic trading level. And now they can have more discretion. They can uh, think faster and they can execute correctly on those thoughts. My general response is, okay, great. So do whatever you think that it is right for you because it looks like you are starting to become an expert trader now. As you see, although there are a lot of steps involved, there is a long program. It needs endurance to get to the end of it. But in reality, it's actually a shortcut from where people are post-beginner stage to where they want to be, which is an expert trader.